Good morning, this is 3SD. St David's have handed on a report of a cold burg in Balaclava Crescent last night. So, um, with PJ? Uh, uh, present. Just start uh, wondering when you'll be attending that cold burg. Sorry, Tess, which cold burg is this? It's all right, I've got the details. I can fill him in on the way. You finished filing those leap reports, have you? Just about. Well, I've been asking you to do it for two days. Well, we have been short-handed. Thought the boss would do it for you, did you? Well, no. Yeah, well, you can do it this morning. Jack, you can go with PJ. All right, ready, PJ? I just finished my coffee, mate. What's time if you ask me? Filing stuff that's in the computer anyway. Ah, well, never mind. Relief's at hand. The boss is due back tomorrow. Well, not a minute too soon. I might get to do some real police. Excuse work. me, yeah, gentlemen. Yeah. What are you doing there? Uh, Sergeant, I don't believe you've had the honour of meeting these two. This is Compo Hayes. <laughs> Alan, at your service. How do you do? Um, my associate, Richo. Uh, we were hoping you might be able to spare a little bit of space on your notice board for... Um... Mount Thomas's running of the Rams. The tradition continues. Oh, I heard about that. Wasn't there an article in the Gazette? It's one of the great Mount Thomas traditions. It's actually been in abeyance for about 50 years or so. But when John Make Peace Thomas... The grandson of the founding father of Mount Thomas ran naked down the main street... Do I want to hear this? Oh, yeah, it's a fascinating story. Made a vow, he did, you see. He said if the drought broke, he would run down the main street with his rams naked. I don't think you should be telling no, me about this. We're going to reenact it as a fundraiser for yeah, the Mount yeah. Thomas Brigade of the Country Fire Authority. They badly need a slip on firefighting unit. Oh, uh, what? It's like a pump. Slips on the back of flatbed trucks. Imagine the scene. The men of Mount Thomas running down the main street of Mount Thomas amongst the rams, naked as nature yeah. intended. Sorry, gentlemen, I'm going to have to stop you right there. You say uh, naked blokes chasing sheep is a great Mount Thomas tradition. Well, that's fine, but if you do it in public, it's illegal. Well, you can't stop the run. We've even written to Al McPherson inviting her. Sorry, it's willful and obscene exposure. And if you do it, I'll have you arrested. I want to see Tom Croydon. Senior Sergeant's away today. Uh, is there something we can help you with? You in charge? Until the Senior Sergeant gets back, yeah. Uh, Russ Cavill, isn't it? That's right. I'm Sergeant Tess Gallagher. Now, um, what can I do for you? I need to have a word about the cancellation of our CFA right. fundraiser. Okay, let's rewind, shall we? I haven't cancelled anything. I just advise your organisers that the event was illegal and it could lead to charges being laid. Right. Well, we are coming up against the worst bushfire season on record and we're going to need all the help that we can get. Uh, uh, can we continue this in private, please? Yep. Come in here, thanks. Thank you. Is it, um, is it really going to be the worst bushfire season on record? Russ says that every year. Well, he's right about one thing. The CFA is definitely worthy of our support. Worthy of a new captain, too. Well, that might just happen. Apparently some of the blokes have had a gut full of Russ. Well, he's never going to be Mr. Popularity, is he? A country town. You, you yeah, Brown knows a lot. At least not act like a Pomeranian on steroids. No wonder he's so keen for the fundraiser to go ahead. Yeah, he's probably thinks that's going to save his job. Yeah. He's a bit desperate, though. Excuse me, look, there's Russ Cavill around here. Uh, he's with Sergeant Gallagher, and you are... Dan Ryder. We've got a fire at Mr. Purvis's property, and he's alleging arson. Save us the effort. We better douse it anyway, eh? Yeah, of course we will. Okay, we will. Max, look, scout around the perimeter, make sure there's nothing flammable. All right? Don, <laughs> take care of the hoses. All right, look lively, lads. Hey, boys. Hey, Russ. Got yourself a keen one there. Yeah, Dan. It's bad enough I've got to put up with him telling me how to run things at work. He does it here, too. He seems to know what he's doing. Yeah? yeah he was captain of a brigade up at Woomalang, wasn't he? God, <laughs> I wanted on the record that I could smell an accelerator. What? Petrol. You smelled an accelerant. Accelerant, accelerator. What the hell? It makes things go faster. That was no accident. Keith, okay, this is a really stupid question, but did you happen to have any petrol in there? Hardly any. A couple of cans of two-stroke for the mower. Every shed in Australia has two-stroke in it. Who does your wiring, Keith? He did it himself. Look, he did the wiring himself. Look what he used for insulation tape. Masking tape? Yep. Yeah, well, he's going to use insulating tape. <laughs> but he used all that up for the hot water pipes. Why didn't he just call an electrician? Oh, according to so... Keith, they charge like a wounded bull. And not as much as replacing the whole shed. That's not the worst for it, though. He wants to claim this on insurance. He even asked Russ Cavill not to dob him in. I'm glad you two are back. That was the owner of the place that was burgled last night. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Come on, Jack. Don't worry about it. I'll save you the time. It was his ex-girlfriend come back to collect her stuff. 
He forgot he gave her a key. Uh, forget it, Jackie. You finished those leap filing those leap reports? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, how about a change of pace? Hey? Collect mm -hmm. the lunches? Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, turn the tap full on. No, no, no. <laughs> Back halfway there. That's it. You're getting there. Hey, Letty. Hey, Jack. Hey. How are you? Good. How are you? Yeah, good. Why don't you go and get these people their lunches? I'll take that. Oh, yeah, okay, sorry. I'll come with you. Yeah, yeah, come. Thanks, Chris. I thought they were going to stand there staring at each other all day. Oh, I don't think me, you lot, are lucky I'm talking to you at all. Hey? Well, that Tess Gallagher, anyway, you tell her from me she's nothing but a spoil sport. This is the running of the Rams we're talking about. A few blokes running around in the all together. Don't tell me she'd be seeing anything she hasn't seen before. Well, I couldn't vouch for that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you tell her from me. She's in my bad books. Right, I'm saying you've been wasting. If a horse is scratched, the cookies give you your money back, right? In this case, the whole event's been cancelled. I'd like my dough. <laughs> There's no saying the run has been cancelled. Negotiations are not yet necessary at a standstill. Yeah, meanwhile, my money's just lying idle. Shut up, please, mind. shut up. I could be investing Saturday. That's a good option. Be your thanks, Chrissy. Just found out why Compo's involved in the running of the Rams. Oh, look, I knew that'd have to be a scam. What is it? He's uh, running a book on it. You got any proof of that? Well, they certainly clammed up when they spotted me. Next time, invite Compo and his mate down here for a chat. For SP bookmaking? Yeah, it's still illegal, as far as I know. How do you run a book on running of the Rams? Well, you bet on eventualities. How many injuries there's going to be? How many rams you got to put down? Odds on Al McPherson turning up 10,000 to one. A few mugs. I'd have to put 10 bucks worth on that, wouldn't I? I'd put 10 bucks on that, absolutely. 10,000 to one, that's $100,000, and Al McPherson. See, Benny, one's born every minute. Uh -huh. Gotcha. <laughs> so, uh, you and Letty seem to be getting along pretty well. Yeah. You asked her out yet? You told me to be careful, remember? Yeah, well, as careful and as careful. I mean, you don't want to be a virgin your whole life. <laughs> so it's all right with you if I ask you out then, is it? Obviously it's none of my business, I'm just saying. Look, I thought about what you said. And I don't think Letty is the one, you know what I mean? As much as I'd like her to be. Yes, Mr Purvis? Ah, so it's true. Tom's away. Till tomorrow. And you're looking after things, are you, Lassie? I am. Uh, what can I do for you? I just want to reapply for a firearms license. Firearms license? Yeah, sure, you can apply. Uh, have you had one before? Oh, yes, yes. Revoked. Silly misunderstanding. Okay. Misunderstanding? Keith, you had a skin full and you were shooting at anything that moved, remember? In that case, I wouldn't hold out any great hope. Now, look, what's a bloke to do? How can I keep vermin down on my place when you won't give him his license back? Well, I, don't, I can't help you with that. Is there anything else we can do? No. I've had it with you people. In future, I'm taking my police business down to St. David's. Yeah, sure. Can we hold you to that? That was Russ Cavill. He's had a theft at the machine shop. That's where it ought to be, right there. Right. When did you notice your MIG welder had been taken, Mr. Cavill? As soon as I got back from Keith's. The welder's not all that's gone, you know. No sign of forced entry. Thought not. So, um, you said something else had gone? Yeah, it's bloody Dan Ryder. I mean, that's what I've been trying to tell you. He's the one that's got it. Well, you see if I, mate. He's no mate of mine. I was short-staffed, so I took him on as an extra fitter. Well, how long's he been working for you? A couple of weeks. He's new in town. So what makes you think he's taken your welder? Well, where is he then? Eh? Hey? No sign of Dan Ryder. No, no oh. sign of him since the fire at Keith's. Well, maybe Russ could be right. Maybe he didn't nick that mid welder. Well, I've circulated the vehicle whereabouts, so I'd like to say. Sorry. How much is a thing like that worth? Oh, it depends on the customer. I mean, you might be flogging it to the competition. It'd be a bit obvious, wouldn't it? Oh, there's got to be a logical explanation. Well, Dan's not answering his pages. Well, yeah, hopefully. We'll pick him up and find out, eh? Yeah. Do you want a drink? Yeah, thanks, Tess. Uh -huh. But, uh, better get in the bottle. Well, she's, uh, sort of getting the hang of it. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Listen, you want a couple of um, movie tickets by any chance? What are you up to? Well, well you know, I, I'm just a member of this movie club in St David's and they send you free tickets, but I can't go and I, and I kind of thought... You thought the lady and I might like to go? Well, yeah. That'd be nice. Thanks. Yeah. Let me, why don't you go out to the kitchen and get some more lemons? Okay. Shouldn't be serving you after all the problems you've created. 
if this is about the run, I'm just doing my job, Chris. Maybe you don't understand how important the CFA is to a country town. They should find a legal way of raising their funds. <laughs> well, I wish it was that simple. But the publicity has already happened yes, and please. half the money has been pledged. When Tom comes back, he won't let the running of the Rams proceed anyway. What about the other punters? Are they getting their money back? No. No, all oh, right. No, but when Tom comes back, he'll put her back in a box. G'day. Oh, Sergeant, <laughs> how are you going? Uh, funny thing, we were just talking about you. Really? It must be why my ears are burning. Um, that's my diary. Oh, OK. Uh, you know, important dates like birthdays and that sort of thing. Richo, 200 bucks. That's a pretty generous gift, isn't it? Well, that's the sort of guy I am. Very generous, aren't I, Richo? How about a talk about SP betting? 8am tomorrow morning at the station. Can't be late. Uh, yeah, that'll be marvellous. It is part of the heritage of Australian country towns. Someone always runs a book on everything that happens. Is that so? Ask anyone. PJ here. Well, PJ here closed you down last time you were taking bets on the GGs. Or don't you remember? I have some misunderstanding. Long forgotten on my part. And long forgiven. Why, thank you. I'm just providing a community service. Thought the TAB did that? The TAB is a monopoly, which is against the spirit of our age. The watchword, Sergeant, is competition. And I'm providing it. Not anymore, you're not. Consider yourself closed down. I'm trying to be a little bit enterprising so he doesn't have oh, to rely... Oh, put a cork in it. You're lucky you're not being charged. Senior Constable Stewart, can you please put Mr Hayes here through the attendance register? Right. So, uh, how'd you go? Ask her. Okay. Oh, yeah, I did, uh... No go, I'm afraid. She said she'd stay home and pay bills. Bills? I thought she was interested in you. So did I, but you know how it is. If you leave it too long, they go right off you and... Morning, all. Morning, boss. Hello, boss. How are you? Good parish, you? Oh, fine now. Hey, how was your course? Oh, I've got management running out of my ears. At last, there's someone here who can listen to a bit of reason. Compo, what are you doing here? Oh, he's been up to his usual tricks, you know. SP bookmaking. Have you charged him? Nah, just send him off with a flea in his ear. Good call. Best way to deal with compo, I always find. Uh, so, any other problems while I'm away? No, nothing really in hand. Oh, wish to make a serious complaint. Hey, now, just make a minute. I was here five. first. Look, I'm a very busy man. Do you mind? Oh, all right, right, all right. One at a time. I may be self-employed, but I've never got a moment to... Are you two busy? Oh, Ask any farmer. Please. He'll show you busy. It's about our fun. Tom, Tom. Tom. Get, now, Tom, I came in here a few minutes ago. You can move your up my gun. This is your good party. He's old age. He's old age. He's old age. Uh, Sergeant Gallagher has my full support, otherwise I wouldn't have left her in charge. But that, 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 that's enough. Enough. The whole point here enough. is that... Now, if you've got a legitimate complaint, there are official channels. Otherwise, what she says goes. Just to explain what Russ was on Teresa, about... Teresa, I said you had my full confidence and I meant it. You don't need to justify yourself to me. Right. Uh, Parish right. file these, would you please? Mm -hmm. What are these still doing here? Been They've been busy. sitting there for four days. They should have been filed. See to what she does, Andy. Yes, I know, I know, I want to it. You know what a MIG welder looks like, Jack? Big thing. Used for joining bits of metal together. Haven't we lost one of those? Not anymore. Passing motorists just found one out in the old Widgery Road. No sign of life. They must have dumped the welder and racked off. Oi. What's up? Uh, what time is it? This is crazy. I was just taking the MIG welded widgery for repairs, that's all. Without letting anyone know. Russ knew. Uh, that's not what he's telling us. <laughs> You're kidding. No. Look, the bloody MIG welder was always breaking down. Russ said it was too expensive to get fixed. But I did a deal with this bloke with a repair shop in Widgery. Look, Russ knew about all this. You got a pager, Mr Ryder. Why didn't you answer? Because I couldn't. The bloody heap of junk I was driving broke down. Look, I walked to the nearest farmhouse, nobody was home, so I settled in for the night. Right, and not one car passed you by? Well, I took the old Widgery Road. I thought it'd save a bit of time. Haven't you got a two-way in your ute? Battery was flat, no power. Look, it's the truth. Look, check it out if you don't believe me. You're backing her up. <sighs> I've got to. She's my 2IC. Oh, fair 
had income, Tom. You're getting old before your time. Anyway, I don't even see how this running of the Rams could even get off the ground. Uh, injuries, for a start. They're all volunteers. Oh, the Rams aren't. I mean, now what's a good ram cost you these days? Four thousand, five thousand dollars? One of them slips, falls, breaks a leg. That's a five thousand dollar roast dinner you're looking at. Anybody lending their rams to an event like this would be a total drongo. Funny you should mention that. Who? It's Keith Purvis. He's running five rams. Uh, then they're not his. They're somebody else's. No, Keith is far too canny for that. I called him at a weak moment. He was in the pub half, cut big noting about what he'd do for the CFA, and I put it to him. Uh -huh. Oh, please, Tom, you know how important this is for the town. Come on, you could fix it with Tess if you really wanted to. This is how you persuaded Keith. Oh, Tom, please. I'm not having a weak moment. Oh, for God's sake, you know, when somebody dies next summer because the CFA don't have a decent firefighting unit, I'm holding you personally responsible. You know I'm happy to do anything else I possibly can to help. Good. Raffle tickets, buy a book. This is the book of raffle tickets you just bought in aid of the new slip-on firefighting unit. Great. What do I get if I win? A meat tray. Just my luck if I do. You can always donate it back again if you don't like it. No, I always have a station barbecue. Look, I know Chris was in your ear about the running of the rams. Couldn't you have found some other way to deal with that? I tried but to. you've got to understand this. Fundraisers in country towns, they're not just fundraisers. They're part of what makes us stick together. Gotcha. OK, uh, Les Brown's missus says that uh, Russ Cavill's been trespassing and Les and Russ are about to have a punch-up. Feel like a ride? Well, it's not exactly a CI matter. Then can I borrow the CI car? Both of my vehicles are out. Oh, come. Here we go. Uh, look, look, I'm telling you to get that fixed. And I'm telling you this is not a police state yet. And jump that fireman like you can't wander all over my yes. property all telling me right, how to do settle things. Settle down. Bloody ignorant cockies. All they do, they're just only happy when they're burning the countryside down. Who are right. you calling take, ignorant? Take it easy, Mr. Right. Brown. Called in his little army, did he? Knew he couldn't take me on his own. I can take you oh, any day of the week, Don't, don't, don't you, sonny me. You don't push it. Stand back. Okay. I'm trying to keep him alive, OK? I checked over Keith's place the other day and I've been doing the rounds. Snooping in other yeah, people's shit. You, you have a look at that electrical work, will you? That's a bodgy amateur job. That's his, his exposed wiring there and there's a leak in the roof right above it. Who the hell do you think you are? I am the mug who's going to have to fight your fires for you. Mr. That's Brown, who... this is a death trap in here. I don't want to have to come in here and find you dead on the floor. What did I tell you? All right, Russ. Now, Liz, you're going to get it fixed, aren't you? Because you gave me a well-meaning suggestion. Not because Lord Mucky gave me a bloody order. Yeah, well, I don't care why you do it, as long as you do it. Well, I got what I came for. Russ, hang on a minute. Hey, we've got some good news for you. I found your MIG welder. Oh, there's no way I knew he was going to take it. It was theft. Pure and simple rubbish. I wrote you a memo. No, you didn't. Hang on. Do you remember giving him the memo? Not in person. I put it in his entry. Hi, let's have a look. Hey, there's personal business information in there. I bet there is. Oh, well, I suppose this one's one. Ah, here we go. Dated August the 25th. Attention, Russ. As you're aware, our MIG welder is in urgent need of repairs. Mr. Ted Bryson's agreed to fix it, etc., etc., from Dan Ryder. Well, that wasn't there before. Crap, you just don't check your intro. Is there any reason you didn't convey your message to him verbally? I tried to. He didn't want to know. Brush me off. Told me to put it in writing. All right, thank you. Yeah, well, look, this doesn't prove anything. You could have backdated this. No, no, thanks, Russ. All right, you? You pack your things. What? You heard me. You sat. You can't do this. Yes, I can. I just did. Uh, Russ, look, listen. Uh, I think you're being a bit unreasonable, mate. Unreasonable? No, I don't think so. I think stealing your employer's property, I think that could be called unreasonable. You lousy old bastard. And are you going to go quietly, or am I going to ask these two officers here to escort you off the premises? The classic lack of communication. The classic lack of common sense, you mean. All it'll take is a blackboard and chalk to keep track of things. Well, we don't have one of those. Well, if you think our people are as stupid as Russ Cavill, my whole means going to install one. Um, listen, boss, I thought about what you said, and from a community relations point of view, I think you're right. So I told Russ and Chris that the running of the rounds can go ahead. Maybe we do need a blackboard. When was this? Um, five minutes ago. Five minutes ago, I'd inspect the Falcon Price on the blower. He's read about this race in the Gazette, and it's not to go ahead at any price. Great. Look, I'm going to have to call them back. Uh, don't go to too much trouble. But you just Look, said the inspector's going to... Organising something like this would take a bit of mouse, and Compo and Richard don't have any. They've had flyers done. Those two couldn't organise a grog on in a brewery. All right, all right, Compo's got a bit of rat cunning, but as for Rich, I've met smarter indoor plants. Believe me, this is not going to happen. Hey, boss, I thought you 
you said yeah, that... Yeah, I know what I said. Chris, what's all this? What's going on? Hey, what does it look like? Listen, thanks for fixing it with Tess, by the way. That is fantastic. Uh, yeah, but what's all this in Adolf? Oh, well, I just thought Compo and Richo needed a bit of a hand. You know what they're like. Yeah, I do know what they're like. But listen, this... Chris, this cannot go ahead. <laughs> uh, two more thanks, sweetie pie. Senior Sergeant, good to see you. Great idea, the uh, the blackboard, eh? Yeah, yeah, great. You gonna put your name down? No, no, I'm not. I'm not a stripper. Oh, for God's sake, Tom. Used to be we'd have a fundraiser and you'd be in the boots and all. Yeah, and it's a good cause. Anyway, you're not going to be flashing anything you can't see on a video these days. You don't say. Look, what if somebody falls over, gets trampled and sued? Oh, Colin, you don't stop football matches because people get hurt in them. Very good point, Richo. <laughs> and speaking for myself personally, my left knee's never been the same since I was tackled as a young bloke by a big copper by the name of Tom Croydon. And did I sue? No. That was a fair tackle. Anyway, you'd run about 15 Hey, yards. Letty, wow, I love the hair. Oh, yeah. Are you ready for a big nut up? Yeah, and raring to go. Yeah, absolutely. Here comes Joe, right? Don't let on. Tell you knocked me back. Why? Just trying to teach you a lesson. Hey, Lenny, what's the occasion? I am a hair. No, I did it myself. Do you like it? Yeah, it looks great. Got a hot day to Tyson David's on Friday night. But I thought, well, oh, nothing. Lawson, there seems to be a typographical error on this blackboard. Yes, boss? Your name's on it. Well, yeah, the footy team, we uh, volunteered as a body. Well, you can just take your body off it. Hey, Tom, Tom, let him run. I mean, it's a big event. Even your girly sergeant had to reconsider, didn't you? Yeah, well, it's very difficult not to reconsider. I mean, especially when you consider the sort of sacrifices citizens like Keith are prepared to make. Yeah, good on you, yeah, Keith. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What sacrifices? Well, putting five rams at risk like that. That's very generous. That's very public spirited. Not with you, Tom. Well, five rams, what, four, five thousand dollars each? Now, one of them falls over, breaks leg, has to be destroyed. That's a bloody expensive barbecue. Well, you're very sure. What, for an event like this? Well, if you can get insurance cover for an event like this, tell me who your insurance company is and they can have my business as of tomorrow. Just what exactly are you up to? Just chatting. Can't let them go ahead and do all that work just to disappoint them, boss. I really think I better increase. Don't worry about it. With respect, that's what you said yesterday. Yes, but that's when I thought Compo and Richo were running the show. Mm -hmm. It's going to be all right. It's also before I put Plan B into effect. Oh! Well, that didn't take long. Yes, Keith. What I want to know is, what are you people doing to earn your salary? Can we do something for you, Ken? Yes. First, my shed burns down. No fault of my own. Then some podgy, dodging, sheep-duffing mongrels liberated me rams. Surely not the same five rams that are going to be starring in the fundraiser. How many rams does a bloke have? Of course it's the same five rams. Gone. In the middle of the night, without leaving so much as a forwarding address. I went to bed early. Farmers have to, you know, and they're up at Sparrowfart. Not that people give them any credit for it. Some reckon that food grows on trees. Some food does grow on trees. Rams don't, and neither does the money to buy them with. You went to bed early. Electricity. It's the curse of this country. Before electricity, people went to bed at sunset, they were up at sunrise, and they got stuck into it. All right, Keith, just for a moment, discount the curse of electricity. You went to bed early. Got up in the middle of the night. And? Us blokes do, you know. It's the bladder gets to all of us. It'll get to you too, lad. Your bladder woke you up? Not on this occasion, no. It was a truck driving off the property. And? Connect the dots, detective. Connect the dots. Truck driving off the property. Missing rams equals... Couldn't they just have strayed? I got the best fences in the district. Ask anyone. No. If those rams are missing, they was took. Well, I can see this is where they was, and now this is where they're not. And the only clue we've got to go on is these here tyre tracks. Well, I don't think you have much joy here, Keith. I mean, this is a common tread, eh? Pretty much like yours. Oh. So basically, anybody could have come off the road here and uh, spread onto your property and nabbed them. Why well, don't you keep your gates locked at night? <laughs> Charlie. Who locks their gates around here? You tell me. No one. And even if they did, bolt cutters, slip snip, in like Flynn, down the road, Bob your uncle. Who else would know your rams were here? Only a few people, the CFA boys day before last, that Russ Cavell snooping around again, as usual, and a young bloke looking for work. What do you look like? 
Hippie type. Hippies don't exist anymore, okay? All well, this one existed, all right. Scruffy, hair down in those rope thing. And dreads? Dreadnoughts, that's it. All right, uh, did, did you give a name at all? Oh, I shoved him off the property, didn't I? Height, hair colour, complexion? Yeah. Hey, Russ. Well, we've just been talking to Keith Purvis about some missing rams. Missing? What, you don't mean the ones yeah. for the run, do you? Afraid so. Oh, bloody hell. You haven't seen them, have you? No, I have not. But you're going to have to find them. We can't have that fundraiser without them. Can't anyone else lend you some rams? Not as such, no. I'm surprised to see you here, Mr Ryder. Why not? I'm unemployed now. I've got plenty of time on my hands. Hey, um, you haven't seen any rams, have you? Sorry, no. Hey, Russ. Mate, you get around a bit. You seen a bloke, average appearance, dreadlocks? No, I haven't seen anyone like that. What is he, a suspect? Just making inquiries. So it all looked first and actually agreed to do the run. Well, we were in hey, the Chris, final negotiation. You hear about the rams? Yeah, about the rams being knocked off. It's on the tally. What? It's Compo and Rich on their local chat show, don't you? I'm sure it's not most morality home videos. <laughs> you may laugh, but those two are really putting their backs into this fundraiser, and we could do with a few more of them. You name it. I just jump. I let Nothing will stop us from getting the vital funds the CFA needs to save lives. Yes, but, but uh, Elle, do you think she would have taken off all of her clients? Oh, oh yes. yes. But I think the real point here, Bruce, is that the only way we're going to raise the money for the new firefighting unit is through public donation. And uh, if you can help, please send your cheque or money order, uh, care of Mr Alan Hayes, that's me, um, uh, care of the Imperial Hotel, and I'll make sure that the money Now I know what he's up to. Obtain financial advantage by deception. No way. I was acting as an agent for the fundraiser. You were on television soliciting donations to be sent direct to you via the pub. It's no different to selling tickets in a chook raffle and collecting the money and passing it on to the relevant charity. That's as long as the money gets passed on to the relevant charities, Compo. I'm just wondering, Compo, why you didn't ask for the donations to be sent straight to the CFA? Well, someone's got to organise it, and confidentially, and and I don't like to talk about Russ behind his back, but uh, he's got a lot on his plate at the moment. Enough said. What do you know about the missing rams? Nothing. No thing. I'm devastated. Sure he didn't borrow a trailer or you or anything to knock off these rams? No, I didn't. You can check if you four like. Four o'clock this morning. Where were you? Where I always am at four o'clock in the morning, in the arms of my fair Eleanor. So he didn't sneak out? I mean, she could have been sleeping very soundly. She has been doing a lot of community service of late. Which the judge gave her because he wanted to give her another chance. It's a good thing she didn't have to front you lot. I don't think he had anything to do with it. Pedro? No. Compo's basically lazy. I mean, stealing five rams, organising transport, it's too much like hard work. Yeah, so we're back to the hippie with the battleships in his hair. Vicky, pardon? It's a joke, don't worry about it. He's a... Figment of Keith's imagination. Mm. That's a very generous way of putting it. But I haven't told you about Plan B. Last night in the pub, I put a scare into Keith about the insurance. Mm. So this morning, first thing, he rang his insurance agent and was told that his rams aren't insured for the race. How do you find stuff like that out? Oh, the way any good country copper does. By going to school with the insurance agent's mother. Don't you know anything, Sergeant? So, no insurance, Keith stole his own rams. Possibly a first, even for this district. We've proven it. That's going to be the hard bit. Ah, oh, well, I was just coming to that. Ah, oh, there you are, Keith. We've got some very good news for you. We've recovered your rams. You have? Where are they? They were located in a paddock over near St David's. Sure they're mine? Five rams, your brand, your breed. No, I can get them back then. Well, we'd like to keep them where they are for the time being, see if the thieves come back for them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand. Right, well, I'll um, see you later. He's heading home. He's turning into his property now. He should be coming into view soon. He's going straight for the shearing shed. 
G'day, Keith. G'day. You looking for something? Uh, no. Your five rams, maybe? No, oh, they've been recovered. They're, they're in a paddock over at St David's. I'm afraid not, Keith. The sergeant Tom told me they was. No, even senior sergeants make mistakes. You mean they haven't been recovered? But they're not in there. They really have been took this time. Well, I couldn't afford the extra insurance and I couldn't let the rams run without it, so what could I do? Withdraw the offer. Well, that'll make me look a tight one, wouldn't it? Oh, we couldn't have that, could we, Keith? I've got a reputation in this district. So you disappeared them into your shed? And reported them missing, yeah. Have you made an insurance claim? Not a such, no. I suppose I left it now. <laughs> That's going to look impressive. The charge of false report hanging over here. You? You're not going to charge me for stealing my own rams. Yeah, for falsely reporting them stolen. But th this time they had been stolen, so we're even, aren't hey, we? Hey, you listen to me. Do you know where these things are or no, not? No, 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 I've got no idea. Nobody else knew they was there. All right, we'll look into it. But do you have any idea how much valuable police time you chewed up, Mr Purvis? You get us coming and going, don't you? All right, Keith, now you may receive a summons. I think I'll go and drown me sorrow. If you do, don't even think about driving. Keith hasn't gone and stolen his own rams twice, I take it. Mm. <laughs> well, you know, Keith, boss, anything's possible. You seem pretty cut up about it. <sighs> Look, you can't discount anything where Keith Purvis is concerned. He did say he was the only one who knew where the rams were, so how could they be stolen? When Keith reported them missing the first time, didn't he mention he saw Russ Cavill and those CFA blokes? So? So, they were burning off on the road behind his place the day before. I mean, maybe one of them saw something. Now, haven't you found those rams yet? Right, yeah, we were just discussing the case uh, now. Talk, 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 you've got to find them and fast. Are you all right, Russ? No, I'm not all right, Tom. Are you Dan Ryder challenging me for my position? If you don't get those rams back, I'm history. All right, I know. I can be a bit abrupt at times, so don't suffer fools gladly. But I put my heart and soul into this job. So, you don't get the new unit? Everyone will understand, won't they? No. No, not when they hear we've already put a deposit on one, they won't. Without raising the rest of the funds first? Oh, God help us, Russ. It's Keith Purvis, you know. He's the one who's behind it. Why? He asked me to change that report, that shed fire of his. You know that? Yeah, remove mention of the faulty wiring. No way, I said. No way in the world. Look, we need that new unit. Well, you've got to find those rams and have that fundraiser. Otherwise, I'm... I'm stuffed. Did you see anything when you were burning off around the back of Keith's place? Actually, yeah. I saw something, but it didn't make any sense. But Keith, he came up in his ute. He had these 44-gallon drums on the back, and he hops on the train, he empties them onto the track. Looked like water to me. And he's back in the ute, and he, and he drives really, really slowly over the wet patch. So, Russ didn't realise Keith was creating tyre marks for us to see. Not until we told him that Keith had stolen his own sheep, then it all started to fall into place. How <laughs> dumb can you get? That whole CFA mob saw it too, didn't they? Maybe one of them was brighter. And stole the rams from Keith. Why not? Knowing that Keith couldn't raise the alarm, otherwise we'd do him for a false report. Maybe. Or maybe one of them wanted to stop the rams from being recovered. And deprive the CFA of their new gizmo. Well, somebody might have thought that was a small price to pay if it also deprived Russ of his job. Are you people paranoid or is Russ Cavill? Dan, I just want to know if you've seen anything the last couple of days which would help us find Keith Purvis's missing rams. You're suggesting I took them. Did you? <laughs> Look, I wouldn't know a ram from a bull's foot. All right, so you've had no experience handling sheep? None. I wouldn't know which end to start. Look, I'm a welder by day and I put fires out in my spare time. That's all. That's what I'm good at. Dan, old mate, I've just heard the news. Coppo, not now. What you here? Oh, I just ran into Keith. He told me what happened. I just thought there might be something I could do for Dan. Is uh, Dan helping you with your inquiries? That'd be none of your business. No, right. Uh, had any luck recovering that livestock yet, have we? Not yet. Uh, because if you haven't, I will need adequate notice to cancel my supermodels. Well, everything you said seemed to make sense. The air of outraged innocence is something we're all getting used to. <laughs> the innocent and guilty alike, eh? Oh, God, I want to know a ram if I fell over one. But I bet I could find you someone who did. Like a farmer? Yeah, with a big grudge against Russ Cavill. Miss Brown. 
bloody Les and his dodgy wiring. You reckon you can hear them? The smoke must have got Have them. you got any bloody rams in there or not? Were well, you going to help me put out the fire or not? Have you called the CFA? Well, I haven't had time, have I? All right, all right. No sign of anything, Les. Don't know what you expect to find in there. You said there were rams in here, Les. Never said anything of the kind. Stolen again. Mm -hmm. We searched Les's property top to bottom, nowhere to be found. I've been missing your company, Mr Hayes. We just thought of another way of making our day, have you? I've just popped in to return some lost property. Lost property? Compo? Alan. Right, can we see it? I'm afraid it's a little big to bring inside. I see, it's big lost property. Big lost property. This I've got to say. Are these the ones? These are the ones. So, there's absolutely no reason why the running of the Rams shouldn't go ahead as planned. Boys, come in. You ready for your big day? So I see you blokes talking to Dan Ryder, and I think, hang on, must be a reason. Ergo, Dan must be the one who's nabbed the rams. Stands to reason, logical. Big yours? A man sees some rams going begging, logically takes them. This logic is escaping you, is it, Sergeant? Because it isn't logical. It's criminal. Bear with me. So then I think, where's he going to put them? You're holding those rams for Dan Ryder, weren't you? Who? The bloke who wants Russ Cavill's job at the CFA. You both hated him and you're prepared to get rid of him. I don't know what you're talking about. Well, no problem. I'm sure Mr Ryder would be real happy to see you take all the blame. He had nothing to do with it. So then I go over to Les's place and I see old Les carrying a couple of buckets of water into the homestead and I think... I'm on the money now. Rams, drink water, buckets. You're catching on. So I let him go, and then I nick him. Logical. All right. But I was going to give him back anyway. After Russ got nobbled. Russ? I told you he had nothing to do with it. I was just after a free service. For me use. But then I thought, what would John Makepeace Thomas have done? Stolen him by all accounts. Yeah, well, not me. Public spirited to the end. So, now the run can go ahead and the CFA can get their new firefighting unit. Well, sad to say, Compo. Alan? Mr Hayes, it's not quite as simple as that. Tom, you've got to let this go ahead. It's not up to me. The inspector's put his foot down. Anyway, Keith's got no intention of letting his rams run. It's an uninsurable risk and he can't cover it. Oh... We'll get others. What others? Others that are past it, others that are ready for the knackers, yeah. Use. We'll get use from the abattoirs, put horns on them. Put horns on them? Yeah, you know that novelty shopping St David's that have masks, you know, tiger masks and cow's masks. We will get Ram's masks, put them on the use. It'd be a hoot, everyone will love it. Everybody except Inspector Falcon Price, who will send me to the knackers yard with all the other old Rams who are past it. Please, Tom, don't belittle yourself. Boss. Do you want to hear a crazy idea? Lady, I thought you had a hot date. No, I do. It's after the uh, running of the rounds. Oh. <laughs> I'm just amazed the boss is letting his whole thing go ahead. Yeah, now, are you uh, sure Falcon Price is okay about this? It's my sergeant's bright idea and she has my full support. Yeah, but she's not the one that's going to get the boot if this whole thing goes pear-shaped. And I would hate to have to break in a new boss. Everybody well, well, ready? <laughs> you bet you could. Yeah. Go on. They're strong, they're horny, they've got a mind of their own. Ladies and gentlemen, the Mount Thomas Rams! Oh. They do have a mind of their own. Where's Jack? Well, I thought he was running. 
chickened out after seeing this lot. Lord, I sir. can't say I'd blame him. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm here. I'm just, uh, this is got, the buddy? costume is not quite... Uh, uh, decent? Yes. <laughs> Hi, guys. <laughs> lady, lady, no, seriously. <laughs> what? Okay, 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 I'm taking it up. Alright, hang on, hang on. Yeah. Oh. Jack, this won't do it all. This is way beyond repair, I'm afraid. So what are we gonna do about it? So the Mount Thomas. Shut up, everyone! Shut up! I'm on! I'm on! I'm on! Tell it! Another supermodel inside. Very good. Very good. Very good. Very good. Very Hey, any Jack? Yeah, yeah, he's, he's busy. Well, we've had the biennial meeting. I have to tell you, I'm no longer captain of the Mount Thomas CFA. I'm out. That's bad luck. Oh, so, um... Oh, yeah, damn. Yeah, but that's not the worst of it. Missus has told me I've got to give him back his job at the workshop. Yeah, oh, I understand congratulations are in order. That's yes. right, thank you very much. Look, I'll be uh, looking forward to working closer with the police. Well, we always try to cooperate with the CFA, don't we, Russ? That's right, Tom. Come on, Russ. No, no feelings, eh? Let's shout your beer. Have you seen Lenny? Hey, Jacko. Oh, oh, awesome. oh, I know where you've been. Oh. 